Hello everyone, many thanks for joining this session. My name is Chen Jin from IBM Ottawa. I've been working with the OpenGNI team for over eight years and can start with the RISC-V project since last year and one of the main contributors of this project. So I'm very excited about this topic because this is the first time I bring OpenGNI to this conference. As usual, here is a set of disclaimer and notice for your attention. So don't make any business decision based on my presentation in this topic. And IBM has no responsibility for anything incorrect in this slides. To get started with the topic, I will surely explain the background of why we're motivated to this project and followed by a brief introduction of OpenGNI given not too many people in the section know about our JDK. I'm going to roughly walk you through a couple of OpenGNI code components as to how it works and get back to share with you the challenges we faced and how we managed to fix them up. At last, I will summarize what we already finished in this project and the next steps we expect to push forward. And we'll end up with a demo of how to cross-compile OpenGNI build for RISC-5. So this is pretty much everything I will cover in this topic. As we know, the cloud framework is a centralized model of analyzing and processing data with extremely powerful hardware software capabilities, which is significant in many industries. But the downside is apparently, especially in the current network infrastructures. First off, the data source is far away from the cloud in many cases, which means it takes longer than expected to transmit data for, result, for resource. Meanwhile, things get worse in the network traffic where the bottleneck is triggered by a huge amount of data simultaneously, and the accumulated concerns on the data security on the cloud. So some industries prefer the data to be stored and processed locally instead of passing over to the cloud. There are also a bunch of regulations that prevent the sensitive data from being transmitted across different countries and areas. So this is why edge computing comes up to address all these challenges. Edge computing is a fundamentally extension of cloud close to the data source to ensure all local generated data are processed as quickly as possible. This decentralized model also helps to save network bandwidth and cloud resources, which is valuable for other businesses. That means the cloud edge and edge device are working together to get jobs done in a more efficient way. To achieve this, part of the cloud tasks are moved to the edge. So the edge devices are intelligently capable of processing data for better performance and user experiences. And the new disruptive technologies like AIoT and 5G will speed up the data generation and transmission between the data source and the edge, which demands mass production and deployment of edge facilities. So RISC-5 is more likely to offer a cost-effective solution than others with a lower cost and lower price consumptions by customization to accommodate the new changes. Um, from a runtime perspective, there might be a mix of different languages like uh, Python, Node.j, etc. on edge devices. So it is natural for OpenGNI to leverage our Java technology in the cloud to support RISC-5 on edge and an ecosystem. For those of you who uh, never heard of OpenGNI, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce. OpenGNI, originally called IBM GNI, has been developed by IBM independently for over 20 years. It is an industrial-level product with a high performance, scalability, and reliability. It starts up very fast and runs robust with a pretty small footprint, which is extremely important in the cloud. Part of the program language was a small talk because it used to support embedded devices for quite a long while. But you would expect a pretty steep learning curve to grasp this language as compared to others. So a couple of years ago before OpenGNI, we replaced the Smalltalk with C and C++ to lower the barriers for external users and developers. The whole project was donated to the Explicit Foundation three years ago to support the Java open source community. And currently, it's still led by IBM to drive all technical things forward. As you see, it holds two licenses, which provides users with more flexibility to get involved in the OpenGNI development. 
The last thing I want to mention is that the name of OpenGNI, because many people may confuse the way the JNI and the Java JavaNI. JavaNI is a simple number of Java version, where JNI comes from IBM internal K8, which is a naming convention from a small talk source code. So they are totally two different things. Let's take a look at what is Open GDK, uh, Open GNI GDK. If you used to play with Open GDK on Hotspot, you may know there are two parts in there. One of them is Open GDK, which mainly includes a building framework and a bunch of Java class libraries. Another one is a Hotspot, the virtual machine core. So Open GNI GDK is composed pretty much in a similar way. Open GNI is equivalent to Hotspot in terms of Vim functionalities. Omar originally was a part of GNI, which mainly consists of uh, threads, libraries, and port libraries, specific different platforms. It is another open source project supporting multiple languages, including Java. From Vim perspective, OpenGNI does everything expected to follow the Vim specification which means there's no big technical difference um, as compared to Hotspot in terms of key components. Include, it includes class loader, which loads class files, verifier, which does bike verification in class loading, JSON natives, which are native code of Java libraries in OpenGNI, interpreter, which does cool things to manipulate the bike code all the way to the end, REST, which is a bunch of diagnostic tools and utilities, garbage connector, JET, just-in-time compiler plus OMR. Everything you see here, you can find pretty much the same functional component in Hotspot. But there are two key components unique to OpenGNI. One of them is DDR called the Direct Dump Reader, which generates the metadata for Java stack in the core dumps. So you're able to analyze the Java bytecode where it fails. Another one is a shared class cache, which helps to store JIT and AOT data to improve the performance at runtime. If you're interested in the two components as to what inside how it works, there are two public hyperlink for your reference. When we get started this project, we have no idea uh, what software and hardware were required for development, whether or not they're mature enough to get things working. We're more likely to get stuck in somewhere if things were not ready or available at that moment because this is a brand new area for OpenGNI, in which case we totally have no experience to how to get things moving forward. So we have to explore everything from scratch to understand the relationship and the dependencies and to evaluate what we can do and what we cannot. So here's a list of two chain for cross combination, the emulator and the OS distribution we used in this project. The normal way of compiling OpenGNI is to build directly on a target system with a bootstrap JDK. But there's no such JDK on the RISC 5. So we have to generate the first JDK through the cross combination on a local system. This is why we need a cross two chain. For emulator, we chose the Quick Emulator, which is a very famous and popular emulator supporting many hardware platforms, including RISC 5. And we chose Fedora and Debian as a target operating system, which are mainstream OS distribution on RISC 5. Actually, both of them are customized to Hi5 U540, the dev board we used in this project. Here's a list of uh, features offered by U540. We need Nix support because OpenGNI runs a Nix based operating system. And OpenGNI is a decent memory for execution, so 8 gigabytes is sufficient for development. To work on the dev board, you have to Burn the OS image to the micro SD card and boot them up on the board. And then you need to log into the tax system with a micro USB connection to determine the IP address of the board, which will be used to connect with SSH. So this is a, what we usually do to connect to the board for the development. So all these features above satisfy all our needs on RISC-V. This diagram shows all the changes in this project. Generally, everything related to the hardware was modified to support RISC-5. I didn't show you anything in an OpenJDK because there's no code change in there, but the code is not customized to RISC-5. 
So we have to update a bunch of building script, make file, configurations, etc., to pick up the specified combination options to have the code build correctly. And this is pretty much the same situation for OpenGNI and Omar, because we have a special a building framework that combines different pieces in the cross combination to ensure it goes on the right track. And code-wise, we do have a tons of changes in OpenGNI and Omar. First off, we turn off the JIT and IoT in OpenGNI and let the virtual machine run in interpreter mode because this is the first step of the project. We need to make sure the interpreter functioning works good before moving to the next step. As we know, a RISC processor works in a little engine, so all any specific code was updated to handle the data order. And we also um, enabled the GC strategies, just a basic one for now, to see how it goes because there are quite a lot of things unclear as to uh, how to make best use of the memory resources from GC perspective. We also integrate the open source the high five five libraries in the open GNI. We had to modify the code in there a little bit to get them a fit with the existing setting in open GNI. In addition, the DDR code is specified to hardware. So we add a bunch of code in there to deal with the metadata from generated dumps for debugging on RISC-5. The OMR changes mainly includes the atomic support and port libraries, which are partial assembly code, because both of them are specific to the hardware and uh, operating system. The course condition in OpenGL JDK is kind of different from what we usually see how it works, because we have a couple of uh, trace tours uh, specific to OpenGNI that must be run on a local system to generate all the trace constants and headers, which will be used in a later combination. It means the local cross two chain, the local two chain and the cross two chain must work together to get things done in this case, which is a big challenge to us because um, the building framework was not designed to handle this tricky, tricky situation. So we customized the building script to split the build, uh, completion process into two parts. The first part is focused on the local combination of the trace tours. Once the tours are created, we just get started to generate all the required artifacts, and the cross compiler takes over from there to deal with the rest of the combination. So this is the thing, how things work in the cross combination of OpenGNI. In terms of how to generate a cross build on RISC-5, uh, first off, you need to boot up the target system on the emulator to install all required libraries for OpenGNI and mount the target system to the local system before the cross combination because the cross two chain will validate all the installed libraries on the target system and link whatever it needs to generate a bunch of OpenGNI re related libraries um, for RISC 5. Once the cross build is created, you're able to update it to the emulator or the hardware. Actually, there's a no big difference between the emulator and hardware in this case. Um, OpenGNI GDK is only depends on the OS kernel and plus the specific libraries. So cross build compiled with Fedora RISC V and works good with Debian RISC V and vice versa. To get a bootstrap JDK for the cross combination, you can directly download the latest OpenGNI build from adopter OpenJDK. Another way is to follow the building instruction to compile the source code to generate the bootstrap on your local system. Um, so um, technically, there's uh, no problem for OpenGNI JDK to run uh, in the emulator, w whether it comes to Fedora or Debian with the different bootloaders. But for the hardware, it, wa it works good on the Debian 5.0 with BBL because we still have problem with the latest Linux kernel with the open SBI, which we're still investigating. So and this is everything we're already done for the moment in this project. Currently, there's no JIT in the JDK. So the first thing is to get JIT on board. We're still evaluating the possibility of getting a lightweight JIT in place to see how it goes and move forward to implement the full JIT afterwards. And more GC strategies will be enabled to provide users with more options in different application scenarios. For DDR, we're seeking the feasibility of generating DDR through the cross combination to support the debugging. 
but we still need to invalidate how many code and setting in there to be modified to get things working. And the project is targeted for Java 11 for now. If everything goes well, we will extend the RISC V support to other Java version like Java 8, etc. So this is kind of a roadmap of what we intend to do next. Let's get started with the demo. So to save time, I already put up the board uh, connected with the SSH. So this is a Debian 5.0 with a BBL. I already um, monitored the Fedora image to the local system. So you can see here. And all the environment variables were set up for the cross connection. So now I just go ahead with the configuration for, RIS, for the OpenGL on RISC-V. I just need a couple of uh, minute, uh, seconds to finish. So everything looks good. Now I just uh, uh, go ahead, uh, get start to compile the source code to generate the JDK. So normally it will, uh, the whole uh, cross connection will take over 10 minutes to finish. So once the JDK is uh, done, uh, you can see the JDK um, right here in the image directory, which already done for the demo. And uh, what you need to do next uh, is just to compress it up and upload it to the emulator or hardware. And I also um, upload it to the board uh, for demo. So you can see here, I've just run the dash version to verify. It's kind of slower because there's no, no jet in there. Okay, everything looks good. So this is pretty much everything you need to know about the cross combination. So I really appreciate your time to attend this session. I'd like to hear your feedback of what we already done for the moment in this project. So this is a GitHub link of the RISC-V project we have been working on and the Slack channel for you to join the discussion on RISC-V. If you have any comments, concern, suggestion on our product, please let us know. Thank you.